So parasternal long axis view of the heart. In this view, we're using the parasternal window. Okay, so the window, and there's multiple standard windows. So if you didn't listen to that lecture, you can go back and listen to it. We're using the parasternal window. And the parasternal is mostly on the left side of the okay? So it's on the left side of the sternum, not on the sternum, but close to it. So notice this is the transducer here. So you'll see this. If you see this image, that blue structure, that's what we are resembling as uh, the transducer, the one that's now putting out, transmitting the ultrasound waves to the structures of the heart. So we're putting it at this window here, okay? So you have the transducer on the patient's chest, and it's located, if you follow along here, so again, this is the first view of the echo exam we tend to do, okay? So the first view, you wanna be aware of that. The position of the transducer, okay, you can follow along here, it should be at the left sternal edge, okay, at the left parasternal window, at the third to fourth intercostal space, okay? Sometimes you move above uh, or below, okay? You can maybe go as high as the second intercostal space in some patients, but often between the third and fourth, so you can see that positioned here, the marker that orients us, us not only on the picture, so you can see that here, this marker here that we've placed uh, is directed to the patient's right shoulder, okay? So imagine that this is the right side of the patient, this is the left side of the patient, this is their right shoulder, okay? So that, let me just, uh, so you're aware in all of our lectures, where you see this green circle here is where the transducer, the arrow is pointing in that direction to direction to where it should be going. So directed to about 10 o'clock on the patient to the right shoulder. So again, left sternal edge, third to fourth intercostal space, and the marker directed to the right shoulder to about 10 o'clock. The depth should be about 12 to 16 centimeters, okay? Now, if you're looking for an effusion, whether pericardial or pleural effusion, you may actually have to increase that depth to 20 to 24 centimeters, okay? but often you can stick with around here. Now the optimal image is when you have the septum nearly horizontal, where it separates the left and right side of the heart, okay? So let's look at this image here, okay? So we'll erase some of this. So we have the transducer position and the image that we get, imagine this is our transducer right here, okay? This is the orienting marker of it. And notice that what we're seeing as we look down right from the top of the anterior portion of the chest we see the right ventricle mainly that right ventricular outflow tract so rvot is right ventricular outflow tract and then again so this is the image you pretty much see here in the middle but i use these cartoon images so that you can see what's going on so this is the cartoon one this is the real image and then this is the labeled image so you have all three there okay i think this is the most helpful to the more i see it the, that helps me learn so maybe that helps you as well all right so you have the right ventricular outflow track which is actually this one here and you can see it's labeled there okay and then we have the left ventricle which is this one here. This would be the left ventricle I've labeled there, okay? Then you have the interventricular septum, which is IVS here. It's between them. So this is the interventricular septum, okay? And I'll erase this so you can have, you can just refer to the one. So you, again, you have the right ventricular outflow tract, the left ventricle, and the interventricular septum between them. You have the aortic valve. Notice this here, which will be this portion here. This is our aortic valve. You have the ascending aorta, the aorta right there, okay, as it comes out. All right, and then you have the left atrium, which is this portion here. It's a left atrium. And between the left atrium, which is this here, and the left ventricle is that mitral valve. This is the mitral valve, MV, okay? So let's just label this again. So this is the structure you see, and you wanna keep uh, these in mind. You wanna keep reviewing these, keep going over them. Sometimes you can see the descending aorta, which is uh, this structure here in the back on this image, okay? So it's this one there, but that's not always the case, okay? And this, I want you to be aware of the pericardium is this bright structure, okay? So that bright, right, white structure is uh, the pericardium that you see there, okay? So let's just review this image just so you're aware of what we have. So we have the left atrium, and then we have the left ventricle. 
between them, remember, blood flows from the left atrium to the left ventricle, and between them, you have the mitral valve. From the left ventricle, you have the aortic valve that flows out to the aorta, so blood flows in this direction. So from the left atrium to the left ventricle and out the aorta. Okay, now here you may see some label this as the right ventricle, but this is more often the right ventricular outflow track. Okay, so what else can we get? So we said the optimal image is when you can delineate the left and right side, okay, meaning that you can separate the left and right side of the heart. So let me just show you that. Okay, so you have the septum that we said is, let me erase this here. The septum is this portion here. So when the septum is nearly horizontal, so it separates the right side and the left side. So imagine this here. This would be the right side, that right ventricle, and this is the left side, okay? We have the left ventricle here, the left atrium, and the aorta, and so forth, okay? So that's what we mean by that. And you can see this is a pretty good image here, okay? Keep erasing so you can see that. So hopefully that makes sense. So what do we want to assess in this, okay, uh, in a patient that we get? This, this is the first view we're getting, and some things we want to assess, okay, are the size and function of the left ventricle. So this is the left ventricle, okay, the right ventricle or right ventricular outflow tract, and the aorta, okay, the size and function of them. Usually the size of the aorta is the one we're going for. Uh, the other things is because we are in this view, we mentioned a few valves that we want to be aware of, the mitral valve, which is this one, and the aortic valve. Uh, there between the left ventricle and aorta, okay? And then we also want to look for any evidence of effusion. Remember, in effusion, we're looking at the pericardium, which we mentioned here, this bright right, white structure, and sometimes you may see fluid uh, that may be within that region, which appears dark, right? So fluid will appear dark, black, uh, on the echo, and so you may see that as well. So you want to assess for any evidence of any pericardial effusion there as well, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. All right, so let's recap everything before we end here. So the parasternal long axis view of the heart, okay, is the first view of the exam. We're, the window we're using is that parasternal window that's on the left side of the sternum at the third to fourth intercostal space. We want to have the marker directed towards the patient's right shoulder, as we mentioned here, about 10 o'clock, and the depth should be about 12 to 16 centimeters. The optimal image is when we said that we have the septum horizontal, so pretty much flat, between the right and the left side of the heart. We want to assess the left ventricle size and function, same with the right ventricle outflow track and the size of the aorta. We want to look for the motion, the opening, the closing, any calcification of the aortic or the mitral valve as well. So here's the aortic valve. Let me erase this here so you can see. Okay, the aortic valve again here in the mitral valve. And then we also want to assess for any evidence of an effusion, any pericardial effusion. Remember that white structure there, the one that shows up bright here, enhanced, is that pericardium that we're seeing there. So you would look for any darkening, any black areas that would suggest any fluid collection uh, in that pericardial sac. Okay, and just to remember, these yellow markers that I place, okay, are the orientation markers, okay, and that's where the marker is directed, and as you can see, we said it's going towards the right shoulder. So hopefully that makes sense. This is an important view that you want to be able to, it's usually the first view, so this is the parasternal long axis view of the heart. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100 
more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book. Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay, a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay, you can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay, and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.